A um, little bit about me. Uh, so I'm the founder of Echo Consulting. We're a project management consulting firm. Um, we are Smartsheet aligned partners as well. So in addition to offering short term, part time project management staff augmentation and support, um, strategic planning, annual planning, software implementations, etc. We also actually implement Smartsheet for clients, not just project management offices, um, but a lot of different clients that use Smartsheet for a lot of different ways. Um, rules of engagement for today. Don't hesitate to come off speaker if you have a specific question or clarification or want to dive deeper. We are going to be recording this session and sending out the slides afterwards. So while well, you're welcome to take notes, of course, or screenshots, we will be sending you out the deck in PDF form after this. Um, with that, we will also send out a quick survey about the webinar, how useful you found it, and it'll give you an opportunity as well to schedule a one on one if you have more specific questions you'd like to talk about. All right, if you don't feel comfortable coming off mute, totally understand there is a chat function in the meeting today. You're welcome to type in what your question is and Melissa, our operations manager, um, will interrupt me when I breathe and uh, bring that question to the forefront. So don't hesitate to type out a question if you don't want to go off mute. Um, so today we'll talk really quickly benefits of a project management office, project management office, implementation basics. Again, today's session is going to be focusing on the actual configuration of the tool, less about the change management, the types of project management offices, why you would implement a project management office and things like that. Although I did hear that we might be presenting that piece about project management offices in a few months. So we'll talk about the end about some of the other upcoming events we have. We'll be doing most of our session today in Smartsheet, doing a Smartsheet PMO demo specifically about configurations, and we'll wrap things up with a couple of gotchas and lessons learned from all the Smartsheet implementations that we've done here at ECHO. Any questions on what you should expect today? All right, so project management office, we're going to be talking about how a project management office can help us standardize the intake of new projects and ideas, how to execute them on a more consistent basis and prioritize the projects so that the most important projects have the resources they need um, to hit their, their targets. So we're going to be focusing our attention on high impact projects, which means that we are going to be saying no to some projects, which is a really oftentimes a, you know, a big issue for clients. They end up having so many different projects. They say yes to every Thing, what comes first and maybe none of them are successful because they can't focus on the highest one. We're going to be laying the groundwork for successful um, execution. So how do we set our project managers and our departments up for success um, by giving them the information that they need through the project intake process, understanding what the prioritization is and where they fit in the larger picture, right? That's a very quick version of project management office. We'll talk just a little bit about some of the benefits. So um, some of the things that cause people to originally um, set up a project management office is because they're having issues where uh, their teams and or executives don't know what the status of something is. Like, what's the status of this? What's the status of this? If this changes, et cetera. So transparency is one of those key drivers that oftentimes causes an organization to look and say, hey, we really need to think about providing better structure, not just at a project level, but taking it up a level and kind of being able to look across projects. Um, prioritization, you've got so many ideas, so many different things we could be working on um, in the age of digital tra transformation. So many things are moving fast. Priorities change. How do we manage the prioritization of the different initiatives and projects that we're working on? How do we communicate that out to um, to all stakeholders effectively? How do we make sure that we have the right quality and consistency? We have the deliverables that we need from an audit standpoint, etc. Um, to um, execute consistently. Um, so we'll be talking about some of those templates and things like that. We'll be talking about accountability. So when we assign something out to someone that they know what that means, they have visibility of what's assigned to them, not just within a given project, but across all of their projects and sometimes even project work as well as operational work. They might have a full time job in an operations role, but they're also being tagged for a project as a subject matter expert role. How are they able to see what tasks they've committed to at what time and if they change that for any reason, how that impacts other things and communicate. So these are some high level benefits of the PMO. Being able to roll up across projects to, at the right level to the right stakeholders is very important. We talk a little bit about resource allocation today, so understanding that oftentimes project teams are unfortunately not 100% allocated to one project. Many times people are, you know, 
actually tag to work on two or three or even more projects at a given time, depending on the way your organization defines projects. Um, so how we get a visibility about where resources are allocated. We talk a little bit about governance. So I ran into an issue just this past week with a client that is struggling with a project was put on hold and yet the executive sponsor didn't realize that the project was on hold. How did that happen? So understanding how we move projects from phase to phase, how we move projects from status to status, everyone that needs to be aware of that change is there, buys in if there's a re review or an approval process that that is managed. So how can we have the tool support that governance process and the understanding that it's not just the tool, it's people process and tool. And then last but not least, we'll be talking a little bit about tracking and analyzing work. We'll be talking a little bit about metrics and understanding that as a project management office matures, what we're really looking to do, right, is not just be able to look at the data at a point in time, but actually track data and analyze it over time so that we can glean information from those analytics, understand how our project management office has changed, how projects have evolved, um, and hopefully apply those lessons learned to future projects for better execution. So Smartsheet, just to be very clear, today's session is going to focus on Smartsheet implementation. So specifically for Smartsheet implementations of project management offices. So this concept of hierarchical data, how we are going to roll that up and get that out to different stakeholders. Um, we did provide a webinar on Smartsheet best practices that has gotten a lot of traction on YouTube. We'll send out the link to that. If you are a more novice Smartsheet user, be aware that the Smartsheet community is very strong. There's there's a lot of different training resources, both free as well as paid. Um, there's a product certification and things like that. So if you're looking for the basics of Smartsheet, the different components that make Smartsheet a great low code solution for your team, um, definitely don't hesitate to check out our Smartsheet best practices. Today's session is going to be an intermediate level, so we are expecting that you understand basics of Smartsheet and project management information systems, and we'll be talking a little bit more granularly about specific configuration settings and gotchas when you're looking to roll up across multiple projects. All right. So when you're implementing a project management office, we're using the very similar process to most implementations, right? There's going to be a planning, a designing, building, testing, piloting, and then a cutover component, right? Um, our recommended approach is going to be iterative. So we are looking, we do recommend when you are designing, building and testing things out that you're configuring, demoing, providing feedback in an iterative way. So understanding that um, with low code solutions like Smartsheet that have extreme flexibility and really do allow a lot of users to be able to customize their and configure their specific needs. Um, it is important that we are providing feedback very rapidly um, and understanding um, rather than like a, a more waterfall approach. So iterative approach for design, build, test, building out specific components and making sure that you're building out the right components in the right order so that you're going to try to minimize the amount of redo work that you have to do when changes occur. So in Smartsheet, we'll be talking a little bit about the importance of understanding column types and column names and things like that before you build out too much into the automation. So we're getting a little bit more into that. It'll bridge between the Smartsheet best practices webinar we did and then today's, which is expecting more of an intermediate approach where we're specifically focusing on rolling up data across projects. Alrighty, and then obviously making a lot of time for training and adoption. Smartsheet is a very flexible solution. It has excellent adoption, especially with teams that have already used to managing projects in Excel or project. Um, Smartsheet has a much better user experience, but has fantastic adoptions. If you're coming from an organization that has a more board based view, like if they're coming from uh, Tr Trello, for example, um, in those cases, your adoption plan might need to be a little bit more extensive, um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those views that we can use today to help that um, approach. So whenever I'm looking to set up a solution, regardless of whether it's a project management office or not, the first thing I'm doing is understanding the different roles or personas in an organization. So for a project management office, really basic roles, we're looking at a senior leadership team, whether that, depending on the size of your organization, whether that is the C-suite, whether that is like a VP or a director level, the actual project managers that are executing on the projects, as well as the sponsor, budget owner person. There's the resource manager component, so that person might be approving 
project team members, um, but need visibility if they have an operational subject matter expert that is being assigned to project work, understanding where the status of that project is so that they can appropriately resource their team. And then the project team member themselves. There are a lot of other roles and depending on the organization, you might have many other levels, but you want to understand your organization, who are the stakeholders for the project management office and make sure that you're including them in the design process, but also that you're accounting for um, them when you think about your design in terms of what levels of information you need to be able to report on to what stakeholders. Any questions about high level roles in a project management office? Okay. So this is an extremely high level view of a project management office design when you're first starting, right? Um, first component, we need to understand how new projects come in. So with COVID, obviously we've gone more digital and less people are on site, um, but oftentimes projects come in from a lot of different places, anywhere from a meeting, anywhere from an idea or an email or an IM, water cooler chat, et cetera. With a project management office, what you're looking, the first step is looking to standardize how we get project new project information in and what the minimum information we need in order for that to be effective and be able to start making um, good decisions about where that project should be in the priority list. So there's a new project intake, there's an approval, there's oftentimes a review and an approval process. Oftentimes that includes components of the system as well as business process, whether that's meetings, um, et cetera. There's the actually um, setting up the new project or configuring the project once it has been approved so that then the project manager can go ahead and track the ongoing project, what the status is, milestones, etc. There's usually a component of approval or stage gate to move a project from um, you know, active into actually going live and support. And then there's a component of once a project is, is complete, how do we archive those projects so that we're keeping our project data up to date and that we're only focusing on the most important components. Okay, extremely high level flow, but understanding project management offices, some of the components that we need to design for. So um, before we go too much further, just a couple of pieces of terminology. Um, so we're talking about a project management office, a typical um, hierarchy of information um, associated with project management offices are, is this concept of portfolio, program, and project. So oftentimes you could have in a mid-sized to large-sized organization, you can have multiple projects that are managed by a team or a program of people. Sometimes this could be like a value stream or a work stream in your organization. Um, every organization defines this a little bit differently. I've given a really basic one rolling up based on kind of a department or HR component. So like the IT team versus marketing team, but in a lot of organizations, right? IT and marketing projects are very closely intertwined. So whether or not you need to report out at um, a program level or not, um, there's a couple of different things we'll show you as to why that's useful, um, but really think about it in terms of a matrix in in terms of there's the resource management component of it in terms of resources are being approved by their managers or their, their directors and then there's a component of how projects relate to each other and why they would need to be reported on together oftentimes it's because there are interdependencies between projects that would impact key milestones and in that case oftentimes a single project view and what the risks are for this project doesn't give that level of information necessary in order to make good strategic decisions about the priority of a given task or a given piece of work over others okay so this is is an example this is the most basic example of a hierarchy that depending on the size of your organization it might be much more complex right you might have multiple portfolios you might have more programs you could have projects sub projects some programs are going to have only for example sub projects underneath them so um, one of the big things i'm working with one of my larger clients on right now they're i think about 7500 uh, employees um, we're really diving into the different types of projects right now. So that's something to consider down the, um, down the road as your project management office um, matures, or maybe you already have one as, as you're looking into Smartsheet, you're trying to understand, okay, well, we have a project that is a tech project that needs to go through the software development life cycle versus I have a marketing project, which is much more 
agile or iterative or, or, or whatever you end up calling it and board based, how do I use both of these different types of projects, but still roll up the information all together um, to my executive sponsors? Does that make sense? So how are we breaking down the data, but still capturing the same data across all projects that needs to be rolled up so that we can actually have insights um, for strategic decision making? Any questions about hierarchies? Different organizations need different hierarchies. Oftentimes when we're implementing a new project management office, it's a time to review how you um, break down that data and an opportunity to make changes to your hierarchy. So we're going to dive into Smartsheet very shortly here. Before I get too far along, I just want to be clear. Um, I, I almost always recommend that you start um, from a template especially if you're a newer Smartsheet user, um, whether you have templates already existing in your environment or you're, you can tap into Smartsheet Solution Center. So today we're going to be starting from the Project Management Office template set. If you haven't seen it, we'll kind of walk through what the components are so you're aware of that. It's a good place to start if you're looking for do-it-yourself solutions. Um, but I'm also going to call out some of the areas where this template set doesn't quite meet the needs of most of my clients for Project Management Offices and think about some of the tweaks that we often do to make make it um, a more robust solution. So um, regardless of whether or not you're going to need to redo it, I do recommend starting from a template set. So in Smartsheet, the PMO template set includes multiple different um, levels. So they include the portfolio level that I mentioned, and then the project level information as well. Um, so this is just a view of some of the components. Looking at this, there's um, this concept of a sheet. So think about that in terms of the same thing as like an Excel sheet or a project sheet, right? There's a form. Then there are reports off of sheets, and then there's a dashboard component. They didn't get too deep into automations, but I'm going to show you just a couple um, review approval automations that I think are really useful for a project management office starting out today. All righty. We are going to get into the demonstration now, everyone. Melissa, can you confirm that you can see my Smartsheet home screen, please? Anyone, everyone seeing my smart sheet control? OK, great. So um, when I first log in again, I'm assuming everyone's somewhat familiar with pro, uh, smart sheet. If you're not, we have a smart sheet best practices. There's a lot of tools here. So um, today what I'm going to be looking at is the um, the solution center to start us off. So if I go to solution center here um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for PMO. Right. There's only one um, tool set specifically for a project management office, but there's a lot more for projects. So start where what makes the most sense for your organization. One thing I didn't mention, but I want to, depending on the size of your organization, Smartsheet has what's called an add on solution. Assume add on means additional money um, where you provide the templates and are able to make global updates across all the templates. So picture that you have a project management office that has 80 open projects like one of my clients does, and they need to go ahead and add some new metrics columns across all 80 sheets, right? Um, that is where control center can be a huge value in being able to standardize templates, update things across many, many sheets. Control center becomes more like most useful and impactful and starts becoming cost effective when you're looking at portfolios of at least 20 to 30 projects. Um, so I, I do want to be clear there. It is an add on additional funding. We're not going to talk too much about it today, but if you have a much larger organization, you're looking at smart sheet, you're wondering, OK, well, I'm setting this up. How do I, um, you know, how do I make updates across many, many, many projects at the same time? Control center is your solution. So we're going to go ahead with the project management office template template. Um, Smartsheet does a really great job describing their template and providing different um, kind of education modules to understand how to initially configure it. So I think they do a really good job here. Has anyone actually been in Smartsheet Solution Center and seen the project management office template set yet? Feel free to raise your hand digitally if you'd like. So the project management office uh, template set here is going to actually give you the templates for the portfolio as well as the project. So if you're not starting from scratch and then you can tweak from there. So we've actually set it up in our environment as a demo environment where we've set up five projects so you can kind of see where that data comes in from. Um, so this is an example. If you were to go into a solution, it's telling you what to do. This is how you go ahead and download it. It'll add the templates into your environment. It'll actually walk you through. There's some videos here. There's a learning set 
center. This is showing you the architecture of what they've built. So they've got an intake form that goes to a project intake sheet, right? After the project's been approved, then you can go ahead and set up the individual project. Each project is going to have a project plan, a dashboard for that project to roll up the data. Um, uh, and then they're also going to have some additional information here, um, which they call portfolio metrics and then that project management office roll up. OK, so they'll talk a little bit more about what's included down here. They'll show you how to customize it. So it's very step by step. It's a, it, it's a really strong solution if you're not familiar um, with setting up a project management office. OK, so I'm going to dig right into the different components and then I'll start showing you some of the areas that I think we, we need to kind of dig deeper in. So this is the solution set and this link will be sent out with everything else. So we're going to start with a project intake form. So remember in our workflow, we said the first thing is, is how do we get these ideas? So many people have ideas for new projects. How do we get them all into one place? Anywhere from my intro to project management webinar and forward, the first thing I work with any client on is do they have a single list of all of their projects? And you would be shocked or maybe not, that most organizations do not have a single list where all of their different project work resides. So when I say setting up a project management office, that is kind of a more mature component. The first thing you need to do is this intake piece, which is all of my projects need to be listed in the same place. Now, I like the form option, especially for um, stakeholders that are maybe outside of the IT team or marketing team or, or whoever you, your PMO is being set up for. Um, I personally prefer to just go into the sheet view and add a project here. Um, so I don't necessarily use the form in all cases. I can go ahead and just enter it into the sheet. But today we'll show, okay, this is what a stakeholder, like someone in a meeting or something said like, okay, hey, you know, go enter a new project. So new project, name, uh, webinar. And then I think about the project category. Now this is an area that we haven't customized yet. So when we think about project category, we can go back to that view that we had of like, is it an IT project? Is it a marketing project? Is it an operations project? Or maybe there's some other way that you standardize what type of project it is. So this is a way to do that. And you have the ability, and I'll show you today how to configure what those different project categories are, okay? Um, project sponsor who's paying for this who's going to actually say executive leaders this is important we need to do that um, and it, in this form it's asking you for the project manager now this is again the template set that Smartsheet provides I do not include project manager on my forms because I expect that the resourcing of the project management office is going to assign project managers to projects that they have deemed high priority so I actually remove this project manager component don't do that. I like the target start date and target end date. The reason why you're saying target here is because as you know, when new projects come in, you need to prioritize them against existing work that's happening. So identifying the target start date versus the actual start date is really important, especially when we start looking at metrics and we want to think about, OK, this is when we wanted to start it by. This is when we actually did. And that can start to give you some additional information about how effective your project management office is in terms of executing um, to the business needs. Project management offices, my, I mean, I am a consultant for the last 12 years, so this is the way my head works, but like I consider project managers to be consultants. Oftentimes they're assigned to different business units. You might have project managers within each business unit and that's fine. So if you're saying you know, it's an IT project, there's only one IT project manager, that's fine. Um, assigning project manager, I typically take out of here. Here's a file attachment. Maybe you have a business case or a charter or something like that. You have the ability to send responses. Any questions? This is the very basic form. We're going to we're going to change this to include some of the things that I, I think are really important for this. All right, so when I come here, right, this is actually the underlying. I don't, you guys seeing a gray box? So this is actually the underlying sheet. So when someone goes ahead and submits the form, it comes to this underlying sheet. Every column is representing a different field in the form. Right, so target start date, target end date, and here they've color coded it too, um, in terms of showing some of the things that are included. They've assigned a project ID. This is a really important component of this. Um, I do want to just show you tweaking this. So this is a project ID, um, and if you come up to project ID and edit the column properties, you have the ability to auto number 
projects. So you can have a prefix or a suffix. You can have a starting number. So depending on the amount of projects you have and the amount of different types of projects you have, you may want to um, update how the project ID is set up. This is how you would do it. You would go right click to the individual column and you can update those settings. So uh, a couple other things when we get here. So what I just said is that, you know, there's the project sponsor and then you'll see that you have this target start date and the target end date, right? And then you start looking over at other information that comes in the project um, intake form. You can see who submitted it, when they submitted it, things like that. Now let's go to actually look at the form again and think about what other information that we would potentially wanna have when we get the new project, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna come up here to forms. I'm going to manage forms and I'm going to go and look at the form that already exists, which is called project intake form. Um, again, assuming you have some familiarity with uh, with Smartsheet, right? I'm going to come here. I don't like having the project manager assigned at the point of intake. Um, I do think that understanding a project sponsor should be required. If you don't have someone that's going to pay for it, I don't really think that we want to, you know, submit that. Now, in some cases, organizations are looking for, you know, to submit an idea versus like an actual fleshed out project. So you have the ability here to add what's called conditional logic. So um, oftentimes what I'll do is I actually add project type up here. And I think I mentioned that, right? So I said project type and I drop down. And so maybe I wanna look at, you know what I mean? Here's an idea, here's an IT project, here's a marketing project, right? And I want to restrict the drop down values only. Um, and then what I would do here is, depending on what project type it is, I'm going to add logic to say whether or not uh, the project sponsor is needed. So if someone's just submitting an idea, I don't need a project sponsor at this point. This is just a place to leave everything that I want, right? So if it's an idea, then I'm going to go ahead and show project sponsor. Otherwise, I'm not going to show project sponsor. Does that make sense? OK, when I go to um, when I go to project category here um, and remember we had category one, two, three. Um, so I'm going to actually go here and one thing you can do is you'll see that everything's set up as a drop down. Um, one thing to consider, you can go ahead and do vertical drop radio buttons or horizontal. The other thing you can do is actually default the value as well in terms of the category so or or any field. So what do we think that most of our submitters are going to include in this? And this is another way to decrease friction. How do we get more people to fill out this form? We want to only the minimum information that's useful for us to make decisions on, um, but we do need to have enough information to move forward. We also have to think about who we're sharing this form to. Right, so when we go ahead and share this form, is this going to be available for everyone? Only our budget owners or directors or managers, or is this going to be open to everyone? If we open it up to more people, who has the information necessary for this form? What you don't want is open up everyone, but then have them putting in data that doesn't make any sense because they don't know what the category is because they are a customer service representative and they don't know, but they really know that they want this returns feature because they're spending half of their time on it, right? So it is important to think about who's going to be able to submit this, who has permission, um, and, and target that form to them. Now, so far we've just been talking about one project intake form. If possible, I do recommend that you have a single project intake form, um, but you do have the ability to have multiple project intake forms. Um, so what I actually have built out for one of my other clients is we have a project intake form and what we call an, a department initiative intake form. So we actually go ahead and we can, um, we can duplicate this form and call it something else and we can call it for example a department initiative form Let's see here is it popping up in another window huh interesting okay um so it just took a moment to refresh there so you see i have project intake form project intake form copy um, so here I'm going to actually go ahead and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to say, OK, you know what? This is a sub project form or a, um, a, d a department initiative, depending on your organization, what you call it, um, intake form. And then with this one, 
I can um, change the fields, but the information when someone fills out this form is still going to go into the same sheet. So I can have multiple different versions of the form. I can use conditional logic based on selections to show or hide fields. If there's so much different that we need two different people that are submitting the forms, maybe it makes sense to actually create multiple forms. Any questions? I don't want to dig. I don't want to go too much further into the form component of intake. All right, so let's go further then. All right, so I'm going to go back again, navigating here. Um, I'm going to go to my PMO example. So when we set up a new um, solution template, again, it has that project intake sheet. And then as I mentioned, it has the portfolio level and the project level. So first we're going to look at the portfolio level. <clears throat> and you'll see the little icons are different. Smartsheets added these color coded icons, which I really like. It makes it easier for me. Green means uh, dashboard, blue means sheet, um, and, and uh, orange means it's not new data, it's reported data. So it exists somewhere else and I'm consolidating into multiple, multiple sheets into one. So I'm going to go to the project management office portfolio dashboard. This is their standard dashboard that they provide you as part of this template set. It gets you started. Um, so this is an example PMO portfolio dashboard um, up here to the right. If you've been using Smartsheet for a while, be aware that they did change their dashboard editing capabilities a few months ago. Um, so just be aware if you haven't edited a dashboard in a little while, there have been some updates. Um, they're pretty intuitive, but just be aware that it does feel a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down, show you guys the dashboard, and then we'll talk about how we can edit some of these things. Okay. So I'm um, showing me the number of projects, showing me the number of projects by schedule health, and then it's giving me a couple of metrics that they have. So there's total projects, six, there's one active project, there's no at risk, shortcut to the actual project sheet, um, and then it's showing me a really quick Gantt chart just based on the start and end date here. Okay. I don't love this dashboard, but it does give you a place to get started. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And the first thing I'm going to do is just show you a little bit about charts because this is probably my least favorite. Um, so I'm going to go here and again, different um, dashboard editing capabilities than you might have seen before. I'm going to go to edit. Um, and I like to see the total projects and look at the health across everything. So this is basically showing you that there's only one project um, that even has health. Um, and it's green. So I'm actually going to say, you know what? I don't like this column formula. I typically like the pie chart or the donut chart to show this. Um, but huh, I wonder why it's not showing pie and donut chart. The reason it's not showing pie and donut chart is because there's three different categories. So it's a matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to edit what information is being pulled in. And I'm going to go to the underlying data source. It's going to take me to the sheet that already was included. So these are the project metrics. And I'm going to say, you know what, for project health, I want to see, you know, just the project schedule health, the total. Right? So that's the information. I'm not going to look where it was, was everything. I'm just going to look at the total information here. Okay. Now, when I do that, it then gives me the option of different chart types. Right? So I'm going to do one. Now, Different people like different things. When I'm thinking of projects, I much prefer counts to percentages. So I'll actually go down here and I'll say, you know what? I don't want to know the percentage of projects that are green. I actually want to know the count. So I'm going to go the amount here. So we have one project that's green right now. Um, now, this is very nice because they already selected the series. I will give you a heads up that um, one of the kind of tricks with Smartsheet is that when you come in here, just because you called something green doesn't mean that it's actually going to show up as green. So one of the biggest things that I get people panicking on is they'll say like, it says green, but it's actually blue. <laughs> so how you fix that is you go to pie chart series, you go to the series and you click on the color and you can pick what color it is. Okay. Now the piece that's difficult from a user experience standpoint is right now you don't have yellow and red, but if I go back to my project data source and add yellow or red, we'll see what color it ends up showing up as. Okay. If I want to go ahead, show a legend, that's that green up here. I have the ability. Um, one of the important things is to understand with your dashboard is your dashboard meant to be a static or do you want them to be able to go to the underlying data behind the components? So when they think of widget behavior, each component of your dashboard is a widget and you want to think about where you want to take them. 
do you want to take them to the data source of the widget? Do you want to take them to that metric sheet? Most likely not, right? Because the metric, metric sheet is just a bunch of numbers and formulas in Excel. You probably want to open a specific smart sheet item. Maybe you want to look at the intake sheet or the active project sheet. So don't always just assume you want to go to the data source of where that data is coming from, especially with charts. Think about where you want, if they click it, where you want your users to go. And that again goes back to that user role who's looking at this um, and, and where do you want them to go? Or maybe you don't want to go anywhere and you want them to take no action. Okay. If you were to open up a smart sheet item, it's going to let you know all the different options you have. You can type here to filter. So I'm going to type down to PMO. It'll take me to PMO example um, and I can go to the specific components of it. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to save. Um, and I made this different change. OK, now let's go here and let's pull this active projects list and let's actually edit this. So you'll see here that when I clicked on it, nothing happened. So I'm going to go to this widget behavior and I'm going to say, you know what? I want to open the data source. So I'm going to save that. Now when I click on the active project list, it's actually going to pop up in the same tab where this data is coming from. OK, and you can see up top it's orange. That means it's coming from a report. So it's being consolidated from multiple different locations. OK, now where is it coming from? Right, it is coming from the project plans here. So Alpha, Delta, Beta, Gamma, Apollo. OK, one of the things that I like to do, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. So we've got the different project names and we've got to see, OK, schedule at risk, green, 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 yellow, red, et cetera, start date, end date, and that's what's showing up. And you'll see in the grid view that you can look at Gantt view and that's where it was coming from. OK, so let's just change a couple of these to be dates so that we can see them all together. Um, let's see here. These are all. Actually, let's update here. One other thing to consider with you when you're using a Gantt chart view, um, is that you can go ahead and say that you want to start at today, whatever makes the most sense. So what I have here is I have a project that starts in 2020. So when I open this up, it's opening up in 2020. So um, what we actually probably wanted to do is open up at where we are today so that you're looking at the most inf most important information at this moment. OK. And the way you can do that is editing the project settings um, and updating the Gantt chart. Um, don't save. Okay. Alrighty, so now let's go back into the different components. So we looked at the project intake form. We looked at where that information populates. We looked at the actual dashboard of what information is pulling in. We'll show, if we have time, we'll show a couple other things that we might add to this dashboard. Um, and now let's actually go to the project tracking component. So we'll start with the project dashboard. So here we're looking at all the projects, right, across and there's six projects in my demo environment, right? Um, but here we're actually looking at a specific project view, right? This is information about one project. Um, and here I'm looking at, OK, what percent complete is this project? What's the status of this project? When does it start? When does it's meant to end? Um, this is showing a count of tasks by status to get you an idea. Um, some people like to show canceled and com um, canceled on the dashboard. Oftentimes I actually exclude canceled. I think it's a little bit of a distraction, um, but it really is up to your stakeholders and thinking about it. I've added some project contacts here, so maybe I have a project manager or any of the project team, some links to some resources, including the project plan. Um, and then th down here we're showing a couple of the reports, so the milestones and the overdue tasks. That makes sense. So we'll dive in a little bit deeper and we'll go to the project plan itself where this data is coming from. And here we have the list of the different activities. You'll see the basic um, phases and things like that. And then you'll start seeing schedule health um, <clears throat> as a roll up. Um, so one of the things I like to do when I'm thinking about my project plan um, is understanding the milestones and how we track the milestones. So um, when you go to create the milestone report, the way Smartsheet has done it is um, only showing things that have zero duration. And you'll see here, it's the same as project. It's gonna show up as a little um, milestone piece. And so when I look at the milestone report, it's only gonna pull in zero um, component, uh, zero duration. I actually, in most cases, like to include a, um, like to include a column where I as a project manager or as a program manager get to manually select what 
what tasks want to be on there. So again, depends on the culture of your organization. It's great to have automated components as well, um, but oftentimes I will add either whether or not you have like a specific milestone or a specific approval or something like that that I want to roll up above and beyond just the start and end date or um, milestones. So I will pick, um, you can use milestones, uh, let's see here, um, approvals for example. And here, um, oftentimes I'll include like a symbol of stars or something like that. And then I can go through and say, or another way to do it is like phases, looking at parents, but I'm going to pick up and say, okay, these specifically are the items that I want to highlight on my sheet. Maybe it's because they're at risk or something like that, but I'm giving the project manager or the, the program manager, or portfolio manager, the ability to manually select, right? I'm going to save that here. And let's go back to the reporting and think about where this came from, right? So this is coming from this this uh, dashboard and I have the project milestones. I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And again, I like the more interactive dashboards. Um, so I like to go ahead and edit this and make them actually be able to click on something. So the widget behavior um, is going to open directly to the data source. So if I click on this, this is a report and this report is called project milestones, right? And it's showing kickoff activity, closing, et cetera. But what I like to do is I go up here, rather than start a report from scratch, I save as new. This is probably the most important functionality if you're not used to Smartsheet is saving as new versus starting from scratch. So here I'm gonna call it project approvals. Okay, it's gonna save in the same place that my other report was. I'm going to see that this says project approvals and what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to add a new column, right? I add this column of project approvals. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to check my filters and instead of the duration equaling zero, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to add a new condition and say, OK, you know what? These approvals um, and is checked. OK, so now the information that I showed is going to be what shows up on here. It includes the activities that I selected as well as this. Any questions on that? Okay. All right. We got a few minutes left. All right, so what we've talked about so far, we talked about the project intake process. We've talked a little bit about how to um, think about the dashboard information. So when we think about the dashboards in this, um, in the the template set there's two dashboards that we've looked at the one is the project management office which is across the board and one is a project specific right most often with project management offices there's different needs for reporting one is for the sponsors or, or budget owners and one is from a resourcing perspective in terms of what team's resources are being impacted by different projects so almost always with a portfolio dashboard i'm creating two or more. So in my, I've got three different clients right now and almost all of them have two or three dashboards of information and they're focused oftentimes on scope, schedule, budget, right, um, resourcing, etc. The big piece that is missing here that I always, always, always include in any of my solutions is the RAID log, the risks, issues, and um, decisions and action items and what can get escalated. So if I look at this portfolio dashboard, the most important thing that I'm missing on here is what are the specific risks that these projects have? What are the specific dependencies that these projects have across projects? Does that make sense? So if I go back and I look at my project um, components, I'm going to go into my PMO example. I'm going to look at the project level. I'm going to look at individual project, which is alpha, right? You've got the the alpha plan, you've got overdue tasks, you've got the project approval um, sheet that I just added in the report. The thing that I don't have is called a RAID log. Now, Smartsheet does have a couple of different versions of that. We're just going to create one from scratch just to remind you what it looks like. So I'm going to start from a grid um, and I'm going to call this the RAID log. Okay. And um, in my RAID log, I'm going to include um, the couple of different things again, Smartsheet best practices, Smartsheet um, uh, really basics. So your primary column is always a text column. So if you're thinking about things that you want to drop down, um, it has to be not your primary column. So I'm going to edit column properties, do a drop down, and I'm going to say, okay, risks, issues, action items, 
decisions. And then just a quick tip that I always do is I actually always include my changes in here as well. Um, so if you have a change request, you might have a change request log separate, but I like to log everything here. And the reason why is that oftentimes my risks or decisions or action items end up turning into a change request if it impacts enough from a schedule and budget standpoint. So rather than having to log it somewhere else or transfer the row somewhere else, I actually will just be able to mark something as a risk or a decision and then move it into a change request. So uh, that's a tip there. And I just call this raid type. Okay, uh, tip or trick here. So I used the column type here. If you use type somewhere else, like we added on our intake sheet where we said type like project type, what you want to do is make sure that the column names are different because otherwise when you go to select a report and you want to add everything from a given workspace, um, then you'll see type multiple different places and it, it'll it'll be confusing. So here I would actually update this and say raid type so that it doesn't get confusing with um, like a project type or a milestone type or some other type that I might use somewhere else in my solution. Okay, um, you can update the um, information here. I'm not going to rename and spend too much time on this. Um, but again, similar to what I did with the project approvals, um, what I oftentimes do is add a um, escalation piece. So it's like escalated portfolio visibility, right? Or escalated. So it gives me the ability to manually select what information that I want to be available on the portfolio dashboard versus I might want to see all my risks, issues, etc. Um, for my projects. Um, on my individual project dashboard, but in the portfolio dashboard, I only want to see some. So the other way to do that and the more simple way to do that is to go ahead and um, show an option of like critical, high, medium, low. That's kind of the most common um, components for, for RAID logs. So critical, high, medium, low, right? Now the piece with this is then I can make a decision about I didn't name the column, which is why it didn't show up there, but um, so priority. So then I have two different ways of showing this, right? If I have data here, I can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to do a report that only shows critical and highs, or I can say, you know what, I'm only going to show the ones that are escalated because there might be high risks across six. Again, in this example of this data example, we only have six projects, so it's not overwhelming. But in several of the different portfolios that I've implemented, I mean, we're talking 100 plus different projects or initiatives. So if you wanted to show all the high risks across all 100, unfortunately, it's just too much information overload for portfolio. So really, you want to target the items that are going to show up at the portfolio cross project view to be those specific risks that have cross project dependencies and or those specific risks that require decision making from a executive level or a portfolio level versus a specific project sponsor vertical. Does that make sense to everyone? So again, making sure that you have systematic ways to report on information, as well as having um, giving your project managers, your program managers, your project leaders, the ability to select what information they want to be rolled up. Um, so you, you want a combination of both manual as well as um, systematic ways. So um, example, okay. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, these two are escalated. This is a decision. This is a risk, for example, and this priority is um, high. Let's see here, medium. This one's critical, but maybe I don't want to include it just to show. So here I have this information right from my from my one raid log. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create new and I'm going to create a report. OK, so if again, going back to Smartsheet Basics, these are the different components you have, whether you pick a grid, a project, cards or a task, you're all these are all sheet components. You'll see that, that, that these are all blue, right? The form is something that you're building off of a specific sheet, which is one of these blue items. And then you've got the report that is pulling in from different sheets and a dashboard that's going to pull in from sheets, reports, forms, etc. The newest component on this list is work apps. We're not going to get into that today, but this is huge. This really allows for user specific navigation and permissioning in a much better way. So if you have 
If you already are using Smartsheet, you're having trouble from an adoption standpoint because this left hand kind of file 90s to early 2000s version of navigation isn't working for you anymore. Work apps is Smartsheet solution to provide a more personalized view of how to get information. Okay. Um, so again, I'm going to go back to where I was. I'm going to go ahead and set up a uh, report. Oops. Here I am. Where was I here? And see, I lost myself here. All right, so we'll go back to um, the project management dashboard. So where did I create my raid log? Now I, I just got lost, right? So again, going back to put my smart sheet best practices hat on, right? I got lost. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my recents. Oh, look, here's my raid log, right? That I was working on. Here's what I'm doing. If there is a document that you are frequently using, you've got two different options, right? They have the favorite component. If I want to favorite something, um, I'm opening an individual item and I'm starring it. OK, if I want to pin something um, that way, because for me, I very seldom go to my favorites. I actually go to my recents because these are the things that I've been working on most recently and I pin things to the top. So this is another way to favorites. Again, different navigations work for different people, but something that you want to be aware of. So I'm going to go to my raid log. I'm going to go ahead again. I'm going to create new and here I'm going to create a report. I'm going to call it my portfolio. Right. OK, I'm going to pick my source sheet and I'm going to do that by actually going ahead and selecting my raid logs now. I just created a raid log under project alpha, right? Um, but if I had multiple project raid logs ac across all six of my projects, I would be able to select all the raid items here. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do raid. I'm going to go here. Um, I'm going to pick which columns I want to include in this. Again, assuming that you have basic understanding of reporting. So I'm going to do raid type priority escalated um, created for example I'm going to go ahead and say that I only want for example ones that are escalated um, in this report so I'm only going to see the two that I escalated All right so that's that and I'm going to go ahead and save that and then I'm going to go ahead and file save as new and I'm going to do almost the exact same thing but this time I'm going to say project raid log right um, and I'm going to go there. If I wanted to rearrange where I'm putting it, I could go here right right now and say where where I want it to be. I'm going to put it in PMO example. OK, I'm going to save. Now, in this case, I'm st I'm not starting from scratch. I don't have to pick which sheets I'm putting it in and I don't have to pick which columns or anything like that. All I'm going to do is come to this filter. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not picking escalated anymore. I'm going to actually say the priority. And I'm going to say that the priority contain um, is one of, and I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to show critical and high, for example. One of the things that's nice about this is it does give you a little number indicator here to say how many are included in there. Right. So in this case, you'll see that I've only picked the high and critical, and that includes one escalated item. All right. Of course I ran out of time so we knew that was going to happen there's so much good stuff to go through so a couple of gotchas all right and uh, then we'll we'll wrap up so um, with a project management office understanding what roles need what information there is a real risk of providing information over overload the other piece is making sure that you start with the project managers first and then share information out gradually to the more executive levels once you have all of the data for the projects consistently in the system, right? One of the biggest issues for adoption, I, I'm literally working on a client right now that's saying like, you know, the tool's not working, the tool's not working, and it really is actually that there are project managers that haven't actually updated the project information. They don't have a health in there, so they go in there and be like, wait a second, I only have one active project, I'm supposed to have five. So making sure that you have a very clear implementation plan that includes your project managers, if you already have project management data 
in Smartsheet, then after you have that, then you start pulling together those reports across and you're really talking to those different roles about what information is useful to them. And typically information that is useful to a resource manager, a person that is in charge of the people that are on your project team is very different than the information that you want to present to your sponsors that are more focused on the budget components of it. Um, how many projects are going to get done in a given fiscal year? OK. Um, biggest issue with PMO offices or any sort of roll up in Smartsheet is making sure that your column types are consistent. OK, you cannot have a situation where you have type as a multi select in one place and type as a single select and try to roll that up across multiple projects. It will it'll it'll duplicate the columns. It's not going to roll up. So it's really important that you get a template that you like. You save as new. You make sure that those column types and those column names are consistent before you dig much deeper. OK. I think that's all we have time for today. So let me just keep going. There's more gotchas to go. Um, I didn't leave a ton of times of questions. Uh, Echo Consulting does offer a Smartsheet implementation package. If you're new to Smartsheet, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. We have a flat fee option. We do consulting hourly as well, depending on what you're looking for. This is just kind of a never used Smartsheet before. How do we implement Smartsheet? This is some of the components we offer. If you're looking for some more, you're, you're overwhelmed with the options you're looking at. We do offer a free half hour consultation, ask questions. We like to get to know people, what, what you're experiencing. We do have upcoming events. If you found this useful, we are going to record this. So please share it, like it on YouTube, all that other good social stuff. We have more free um, options down the road. So we're going to do a, we're actually doing a demo tomorrow of a tool that um, Echo Consulting has developed that's based on Smartsheet, which is di deep diving into how we prioritize projects. We're going to be doing a strategic annual planning. It's getting to be budget season. So we're starting to get all those requests from people being like, all right, how are we picking the right projects for what comes up next? So we're going to be doing a strategic annual planning uh, workshop. And then we'll be talking a little bit more about leading impactful meetings and then introduction to change management is coming down the road as well. So here's the contact information. We'll get this out to you. All right, I think that's it. <laughs> and we got 